Yes, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks very much, Ilka. And uh, on the behalf of the two ministries and the Finnish Confederation of Industries, welcome to this event on a bit of a boring topic, state aids, trade policy, but a, a very topical issue for, for issues that I think are very known to us. Actually, over the coffee, Eddie mentioned that it was 10 years ago that you were previous time in Finland. Actually, um, yesterday we had a, a big launching event of my ministry, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, on our future EU presidency uh, agenda, as the, as the Finnish presidency will be starting in uh, three months' time, the 1st of, uh, of July this year. But actually, that put me back to the previous Finnish presidency, the year 2006. That was the second half of the, that year. So about 10 years ago, 12 years ago. So, and uh, in that sense, I think it would be healthy to sort of ask, to think, how did the world look in 2006? Actually, at the EU level, that was uh, the 2006 Finnish EU presidency. So first of all, it's not that long ago in terms of, uh, for example, trade talks. It typically takes a decade to come to any conclusion if the talks are successful. It's not very long in the EU policymaking, but obviously 10 to 12 years is a very, very long time in terms of business. So I think the timescales are very different if you look at the topics from the government's and policymaking viewpoint or the, uh, the business viewpoint. But in 2006, I think the big thing was Lisbon strategy. That was basically the vision where Europe would become the most competitive region in the world by 2015. Things were good. Actually, the EU GDP growth in 2006 was 3.2 percent. And the Finnish figure, who guesses or remembers what was the Finnish figure for Finnish GDP growth in 2006? 4.4 percent. Major number. Uh, actually, those are days of, of the Nokia mobile phones. The Nokia, Nokia mobile phone business uh, share was 36 percent. So things were obviously very different from today. The globalization theme was very topical as well. The offshoring and outsourcing sort of a, um, in a way, discussion was, was uh, hot, but in, in many ways I think things looked good because China had a role to play, but that was the, uh, the factory of the world. In that sense, the value chains were uh, governed by the so-called Western companies, European, American, Japanese, and obviously China and the developing countries contributed, but at the level of sort of the lower sort of a productivity parts of the value chain. So the value chains were very much in the hands of the so-called so organized West. But of course, if we then look at the situation today, I think things are quite different. Europe is not, unfortunately, the most competitive region in the world. Quite the contrary, it's, uh, it's actually been in the stagnation, especially when one looks at the Finnish uh, uh, development over the past 10 to 12 years. And probably the most competitive region is not necessarily then either Japan, Canada, Korea, or not even the United States. In many ways, I think the competitive, the most competitive over the past years have been China. Their economic development has been very strong. I mean, the Chinese GDP growth has been around 6 to 8 percent from year to year over the past 20 years. That means that if you have that sort of a growth trade, in a decade you double your GDP, and in two decades you quadruple your GDP. And that basically has happened in, 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 in China. So in that sense, the sheer size of China in the global arena has become very big. China is just about the world's biggest in any comparison. And obviously that has changed the scenery in very many different uh, ways. So the rising dominance, if I may, of, of China is here today. They are ex exponentially growing power. They have a strong presence around the world, in Europe, and in, in many other areas. And obviously, in, in that sense, uh, the, uh, the, the policies like the One Belt Road, uh, one, uh, road Strategy, or the Made in China 2025, in that sense, actually are really aiming at taking a strong uh, leadership, if I may say, uh, in, in the business, and also in technology, in AI, in IoT, in the electric vehicles, robotics. So in that sense, I think the Chinese sort of a role in the global arena has, has been astronomical in terms of development. And I think that puts us as companies, as individual uh, st uh, states like Finland or the European Union in a sort of a different uh, position as things were in the golden days of 2006. And of course, China is very different, obviously, in terms of uh, its uh, ways of functioning. The corporate governments uh, uh, is obviously very different from the Western standards. The rule of law, the role of the state of uh, enterprises, obviously, actually, 
are, are in a way factors that differentiate China and the Chinese companies from uh, the, the organized West, if I may say. So in that sense, obviously, the present-day uh, uh, environment in, in politics, economics, and, and, and uh, in, in many other dimensions is clearly not short of surprises. And I'm not only talking about China. Obviously, here there are many other issues. We do have our own uh, issues with uh, Brexit, uh, actually now uh, uh, cooking up in, in the European Union. Obviously, the trade sanctions now that are in place uh, in, 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 on, on Russia and Russian counter sanctions are actually hitting the uh, Finnish economy quite significantly. So in this, uh, this sense, I think things are not that straightforward. And of, unfortunately, I should say, the trade and industrial policies have become a tool for higher political motivations. So in that sense, I think the topics of today are also used and seen as tools that are driving broader sort of a political aspirations than just simple state aid sort of a policy uh, or competition policy uh, sort of a, uh, objectives on their own. So I think on and all, this has been a sort of a sudden wake up call for the European Union and its member states. And I think that sort of a calls us to re think issues to make sure that Europe is actually on the same play field and hopefully with the same sort of rules of game as our global trading partners uh, globally. And, uh, and in that sense, obviously, uh, I think the European approach where we have advocated and promoted open, rules-based, multilateral trade and investment, and rightly so, have to be obviously our sort of a backbone, obviously, uh, towards the future as well. But at the same time, I think we need to understand that the global play field is very different and the players, especially China, is so dominant on that playground that I think we need to sort of rethink re some of the uh, sort of a policy uh, dimensions in uh, that respect. Um, and obviously there have been now voices raised that we should actually start a race around the state aid rules or, or uh, in that sense uh, or also the trade sort of a, sort of a policy uh, restrictions. And obviously that's a, an easy sort of a thought to be tossed around, but I think Europe should think uh, uh, more towards the, the, the future. Obviously we have to be clearly assertive, understanding uh, what are the interests of, of Europe now and in the future, and, but in many uh, ways making sure that we are able to develop sustainable European competitive advantages. And there again, obviously, uh, uh, policies like trade policy, innovation policy, enterprise policy, and there within then the, the state aids uh, are, I think, uh, an area where Europe has to sort of uh, be uh, awake. But again, I think the, uh, the sort of a cause where we would be, at least from the a small country perspective like Finland, trying to match the, the uh, uh, amounts of uh, financial uh, sort of uh, strength that the larger global players are able to present, I think, is something, something where I think Finland or even the European Union is not able to sort of succeed. And I think in Europe, we have to sort of make sure that our focus is towards the future, looking at the new opportunities uh, in, in, in the global field. So again, and I think in this uh, dimension, first of all, when we are looking at the present situation in Europe, and obviously, maybe an illustrative ex example is the very hot topic of electric vehicles and the battery industries. Obviously, now even today, the core technologies in that domain actually come from Asia, primarily from China. It's Chinese technology, it's Chinese manufacturing, it's, and it's also Chinese investments into Europe as they are now expanding their production capabilities in Europe in order to supply the European car industries with, with uh, uh, batteries. So in this sense, I think we are in a situation where us, the EU member states, are now competing with one another in trying to uh, tr uh, sort of a be the target of these non-European investments. And in many ways, the state aids come to play there as well. But in many ways, at least from the Finnish perspective, one should keep in mind that, for example, those investments, even though the job creation in the short term may be significant, it's not creating any IP or any competitive advantage above that, because it's based on Chinese technology, non-European technology, and all that. So I think, it, at, least, at least in the Finnish and my ministry, sort of a policy uh, understanding, still focusing the state aids on uh, uh, usages that are actually looking for f uh, future technologies and creating some sort of a European IP around which we can then create sort of a lo longer term and more sustainable competitive advantage would be the better choice than trying to sort of uh, keep up with the, uh, the sort of a race to the bottom type of uh, uh, policies and, and just 
conventional static state aids on, on, on uh, 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 simple uh, manufacturing jobs that are based on, on non-European uh, IP. So, uh, so I think that's a very typical issue, and obviously the trade dimension is, is uh, strongly uh, coupled there. And I'm not at all speaking for the fact that we should somehow now try to, for example, isolate China for many other reasons as well. And I think one reason to be said loud and clear is that obviously China is so big that they don't necessarily need Europe in that sense anymore. So in, in that sense, we may be even in a position where Europe may be actually in a disadvantaged position. And again, of course, our companies in Finland and more broadly are now strongly connected not only to the European value chains, but the global value chains. And being able to sort of a, make sure that we are in a position where the trade policy instruments and the state aids are a, a sort of a, creating an environment where we can actually, on fair and equal terms, then do business with European value chains and with non-European partners and players, be those then in the West or in the East, I think is something which we should develop uh, uh, policies and uh, work jointly uh, together. And I'm glad to see that today's uh, sort of event is not only European. We do have actually Japan and the United States now connected to this exercise where we are trying to sort of a get a better grips on the actual real life situation on, on, the, on the business field. Uh, so what sort of state aids are we seeing, especially coming from outside of the European Union, f from the East and from the West? And in that sense, I think that's important uh, sort of a, a basis for us to then analyze what will be the smartest uh, sort of European policies that are uh, promoting the open, fair, uh, a multilateral uh, business, but at the same time is able to sort of uh, provide uh, uh, an environment for in, in Europe which is uh, uh, comparable and at best uh, competitive when it comes down to businesses and, and their sort of uh, uh, decisions on, on, on uh, locating, uh, for example, uh, research and development headquarters or manufacturing job. So ladies and gentlemen, not an easy topic at all, but I'm really glad to see that we have actually strong business uh, sort of a presentation uh, here today, later on in the program and actually in the audience, because I think it's all important for us as Europe to be base our policies on really a joint and a sort of a concrete understanding from the real players on the field, the, the, the companies, and in that sense, well, hopefully we're able to sort of a, during our Finnish EU presidency and the, uh, and the uh, succeeding presidencies then to create a, a fair playing field in Finland which, uh, and in Europe, which is obviously very comparable also in the global uh, standards. Thank you very much.